Welcome to another update from our sailing voyage around the world. We've sailed from the UK all the way to the Pacific coast of Costa Rica, and the next leg of our journey is a 500 mile passage to Chiapas in Mexico. For this week long passage, we have a fully European crew on board, including Leila and Ladina from Switzerland and Artur from Poland. We've been in the Pacific Ocean for a few months now, and compared to the Atlantic, it feels like a whole new world. Gentle breezes, abundant wildlife, and sunsets that literally set fire to the entire sky. But sailing has its highs and lows and after a few days of peaceful sailing we were met with a weather system unlike anything we've seen on this journey so far. <laughs> yeah. How's it going down there? Good I guess. I did half. <coughs> Only have drank maybe six liter of seawater. <laughs> but it's the compass light fixing. Yeah I fixed it. Yeah? Yeah. So now you're just like creating content while your crew works? Yeah. It's quite easy today. It's not moving at, as much. I haven't banged my head <laughs> on the hole. So pretty good. Okay, so it's 5 a.m. and we're just about to pick the anchor up for the last time in Costa Rica and sail. 500 miles north. This time we're going to Chiapas in Mexico. It looks like the wind might be okay. It might be quite light. And also there's a suspicious looking weather system coming in this weekend. I hope we'll arrive by Friday, um, but if not, it's something that we should probably keep an eye on. Worst case scenario, we could pull into an anchorage in El Salvador on the way. Yeah, I think it's gonna take about five days, five to six days. Uh, hopefully we'll be sailing most of the way, but just in case we've loaded the up with diesel so we can do some motoring as well if we need to. I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> Why? Well, I've never done anything like a life, so... But it's gonna be a super cool experience, I feel like. So I'd sell to Mexico? Yes, very much. I'm a bit scared to quit smoking though, but... You're gonna quit smoking? Yeah, so... We're gonna be sailing far from land for six days. And I'm the only smoker on board, except Arthur, like, sometimes, but he doesn't have any cigarettes with him. So I thought it would be, like, the perfect moment to quit. So, yeah, wish me luck. <laughs> you can do it. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm gonna have a little ceremony for my last cigarette with my coffee or something. Yeah. I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> a ceremony. <laughs> I'm gonna be so grumpy for like the next three days. Just be nice and we'll kind. Just, we'll just throw you in the water. <laughs> if it gets too much. I'm excited. A little nervous. But uh, I trust in the crew. It's gonna be exploration of uh, my limits. We left Costa Rica, the wind was light, but we still managed to keep Elixir moving. This was going to be our first multi-day passage in the Pacific. So far, we had only seen light and variable winds along the coast of Central America, and with 500 miles ahead of us, it was difficult to know how long this passage would take. We were also on the brink of hurricane season, and although it's rare for hurricanes to form this far south, we were ready for some intense squalls and tropical downpours. Let's go. We just left Costa Rica a few hours ago and now we've already crossed the border and we're sailing along the coast of Nicaragua. Yeah, this is our first night of like the 500 mile passage to Mexico and we've already got some dolphins. Jump, 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 go on, do it, jump, 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 yeah! <laughs> Maybe do the dolphin calling. <laughs> Do a dolphin impression. I think that's more like a horse what I do, but like, <laughs> I think it goes something like They go more like Well yeah. like Don't they ever go like this as well? Maybe. I don't know. Whoa! This is a different breed. That was a spotlight. 
One thing that's been really nice about our time in the Pacific so far is that the seas are generally flat. We'd spent a lot of time sailing into the wind, which can be uncomfortable when it's rough and windy, but in these flat seas it was actually a really enjoyable experience. The Pacific sunsets had been unreal and this one was made even better by the dolphins and the amazing crew we had on board. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a gamble selecting crew for the longer passages like this one, but I think I did a pretty good job this time. When sailing offshore, you often come across these moments of insane natural beauty. All of the stressful parts of life on land, money, work, cars, relationships, cease to exist at sea. I feel like it brings back a part of human nature that has been suppressed by all the distractions of modern life. I've become addicted to chasing these moments and sharing the experience with other people has to be one of my favorite things about this lifestyle. How's it being a non-smoker? <laughs> I think I was okay actually. I don't know, like I wasn't like that grumpy. Obviously the choice of occupation on board a boat is like limited. So like once you think about like I want to smoke, like you there is not much you can do to like switch your mindset. Yeah. So yeah, that has been a bit difficult, but I think I was alright. What do you think about your first night at sea? Um, it was wet, <laughs> for sure. Really? <laughs> yeah, like the first hour it was just pouring rain. Um, and then it got pretty cold because I was soaked. But like... And Max had to help me a lot, so... <laughs> but apart from that, like... It was, it was okay, like... It wasn't too long or anything. It wasn't scary. I think it was okay. During the day, it's uh, on shore, and maybe now we are a bit headed. Uh, maybe we're not heading where we want to. But then at night, it blows offshore, so uh, we'll uh, change the course to the port a bit, a bit and uh, hopefully we'll uh, make some progress. It was rainy during my watch, but it was beautiful too. The dolphins came around, they were, they were like glowing in the bioluminescence, it was really beautiful. I could finally listen to my French music without Max complaining. So yeah, I had a great time. <laughs> voilà. What's a bit <laughs> Filming someone when they shower. I mean, I don't know. Alright, Max, how was your first night? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was right. I would say it's like somewhere in the middle of nights that I've spent sailing. It's been pretty smooth sailing, like we've had pretty much this full sail up the whole time. During the day, when the sun's shining, the land heats up way quicker than the sea does, which means that the, all the air over the land rises and it's replaced by air over the sea, creating an onshore breeze. Um, and then the reverse happens at night time. Everything cools off, the land cools down much quicker than the sea. So then at night time, the, the air is cooler over the land than it is over the ocean. So the sea over the ocean, uh, sorry, the air over the ocean rises, being replaced by the air over the land, creating an offshore breeze. So our sailing route has been sailing parallel to the coastline and then all day sailing with an onshore breeze like we are now until around sunset when it dies off and we normally have to motor for a few hours and then the wind fills in from the other direction. Um, we tack or jibe so the sails are on the other side of the boat and then we sail throughout the night on the other tack. So basically as we've been going north or northwest we've been sailing on port tack during the daytime and then starboard tack during the night time. I think we're doing all right, you know, we're like halfway up Nicaragua. So we've made about 140 miles since leaving Costa Rica, which is pretty good going for a day and a half in these sort of like light winds.
we're sailing north along the Pacific coast of Central America. We're just off Nicaragua at the moment and there's been loads of dolphins for the last two days. I'm pretty sure this pod has been following us for like the last 12 hours and we're gonna jump in and have a little swim with them. Obviously we only do this sort of stuff when there's no wind and um, yeah, we put a rope in the water so that we can all hold on to the rope and you know, cause the last thing we'd want is for Elixir to sail away. So yeah, we're responsible. It's always fun when the wind dies off enough to go swimming. Bobbing around and not moving can be pretty frustrating at times, but when you've spent all day in the sweaty small cabin, it's really refreshing to cool off in the water. It's quite an incredible feeling to swim in 4,000 meters of seawater and to look down and see nothing but empty blue space. Having the dolphins there too made the experience even more memorable. I'm not sure why they decided to follow us for such a long time, but it seemed like every time we looked over the bow, they were still there. It's surreal to be swimming around in the ocean and to look up and see Elixir completely become. It felt like a world away from a dusty shed in a freezing boatyard in the UK and I couldn't stop thinking about how far we had come. Can I? Okay, wait. <laughs> that was so cool. That was so cool. <laughs> We're swimming with a turtle. <laughs> he, he didn't care about like he was just like chilling in there and looking at us. Yeah. <laughs> We're like in the middle of the ocean and just, yeah. there's nothing around. <laughs> Except dolphins and turtles. <laughs> and us. With a stiff breeze, Elixir can easily tick off 150 miles in a day. However, in these light conditions, we struggled to make 80. We ran the engine a lot and we spent the first few days motoring between patches of light wind, which would allow us to sail for a few hours before the conditions dropped off and we had to motor again. As well as swimming with dolphins and turtles, a blue-footed booby decided to join us for a free ride. It seemed like Elixir was constantly attracting wildlife. Sure, we'd seen all types of animals on the voyage so far, but never so frequently, and it was nice to have the distraction whilst we motored through the the glassy sea. Unfortunately, there's not only turtles and dolphins. I'm gonna go get that plastic bottle out of the ocean. <laughs> nice. There we go. Thanks. You want me to grab it? Is he gonna bite my hand? No, I think you can go for it. Yeah. <laughs> should I should I talk to it? Just give it. To amigo? Me. Yeah. Amigo? Quieres pan? Quieres pan? What the f Just eat it. I'm kind of scared you would. Give it to him. <laughs> Thanks for watching another one of our videos. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. If you want to support our journey more, we have a Patreon with some exclusive Elixir content as well as a shop with some of these very stylish organic cotton t-shirts. We have a few different designs as well as tote bags, so go and have a look. And yeah, thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video when we have a pretty wild encounter with a tropical storm on our way to Mexico.